Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another EASHL Tips video, where today I'm going to bring you my goalie tips video. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I think, you know, there's not many goalie tips. It's good to have goalie tips as well. I'm also trying to make it into the esports scene uh, on the LG side, you know, the Caps gaming tournaments and stuff like that. I'm trying to get into stuff like that. I think... A tips video is would definitely help, and I think a lot of people will enjoy getting tips from a player who's been playing goalie since NHL 20, and of course has grinded goalie out, and basically it's my main position. If not, I normally play defense, of course, but uh, <laughs> it's it's just fun to play, and every team needs a solid goalie. So here are my tips on how to be a solid goaltender. So I have a game going on in the background right now. Just a game I had a goalie, of course, as you can see there. I got scored on. But I would say my first tip is keep it simple. Um, keeping the play simple, uh, keeping your play in net and simple is definitely very, very good. Uh, a big tip because I see a lot of people they want to use the right stick to slide they want to you know they, they want to make sure that they're in that perfect positioning you don't always need that I would say a lot of the time just get to where the player is be at the top of your crease get to where the player is and just set your feet because if you you might be one step out of position but the more you set your feet, the more you have the chance of saving the puck. Because it, it, make sure, of course, you're always at the edge of your crease. But if your feet aren't set, you're going to get one of those sliding animations that nobody likes. And the, they're the reason a lot of people get scored on. is because you move one more time when you had your feet set. And a, that's when the player shoots it. Because if you're going up against good players, they're going to notice when you move. So just stay set and be simple with your movements. So my next tip here, uh, and I think a lot of people do see this happen, is please do not guess, all right? You have to make the decision as the play is happening. You can't, you can't be late on anything, all right? If you think something is going to happen... All right, so say you think it's going to happen, you don't want to do it. You want to anticipate it, but you don't want to move because you might see it, but they're, they might not do it. Because a lot of players, they'll fake maybe a pass, and you are, you're, done, you're done because you guess to the other side. you got to see when they pass the puck, and that's when you move. Teams will pick up on it in the fact that you move early and they might try to pick you apart from there. And, of course, that's never something you want. And, of course, you also, if you are a little late to that cross crease, I mean, it's not always your fault. I mean, it's it should be your team helping you out. And if they leave you on a two-on-one, that's their fault. And of course, there is a point where you do need to stop cross creases, but you shouldn't always stop all of them because it's going to be tough because you have to react while the play is happening, and you have to have pretty solid reaction time for that to happen. So my next tip here is make sure you, your angles are right. So a lot of people, I feel like, can actually get their angles wrong, and how I feel is that sometimes that allows players to get sniped. So, of course, when a player is coming into the zone, you want to make sure you are at the top of your crease, um, right at the edge, and, of course, when you're in, when they're in closer, maybe you move back. Even in the high slot, you still want to be more at the top of your crease, of course, because you don't want to get that snipe where they cut across the middle and try to get you short side. Of course, you are trying to cover your short side is the main priority here. So make sure you're at the top of your crease. When they are near your post, instead of doing a post hug, all right, you're going to overlap your post with your pad. And, of course, this is so that you 
because of how clunky the animations are off posts, you most likely want to just stay overlapped to your post. And of course, if you do get sniped there, it can stink, but as long as you're overlapping it right, you should be fine. And of course, your ang your angles do matter, of course, when they're near coming post and it, like when they're coming near your post side and they keep coming in you want to make sure maybe you go up against that post like just put your blocker and stuff up against the post and make sure that you can't get sniped short side and of course on the other side of course you want to put your blocker there and it, it just it's better because instead of like coming out of the top of your crease because if they hit a guy that's coming in on the rush, it it's going to be tougher for you to get across, but of course, that's just me, that's how I play. If you want to be, if they're cutting in on your post side, maybe you want to be at the top of your crease and you can be, but I would say, like, okay, in this game right here, as you can see, that's what I'm talking about. When they're coming in post side, make sure you're up against that post like that. Alright, my next tip here is do not use the right stick. Um, I mean, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It gets you out of position a lot, and I get it. It gets you across for the cross crease, but I will give you another way that you can actually get to the other side later in this video that you don't have to use the slide. Because here's the thing. When you slide over using the right stick it gets you out of position and a lot of the time you have to it has to be if they shoot it to the other side while you're moving left and they, say they shoot it right it's most likely going to go in all right and there's a lot of things that can just go wrong using the right stick it's mostly another desperation save in my opinion so i would say limit your right stick movements at all cost and i would say maybe only if you need to hug the post is the only times that i would do it all right so my next tip this one is kind of um I, I feel like a lot of people probably wouldn't expect this one to be very good but it's not to actually do anything like, use any buttons on a penalty shot, really, other than maybe throwing a few flying pokes. If if you have a breakaway against, I would say that just stay up in your... Don't go butterfly. Don't use your right stick. Just stay up, all right? It's probably your best bet because if you slide and you just get a little bit out of position, you have to re-correct yourself, and it's not the greatest... And to stop a penalty shot and a breakaway, I would say most likely wait until they get to about the hash marks of the dots and then decide which way they're going. And, of course, it's a 50-50 shot. I stink with breakaways. I just am telling you what I do in that, uh, to be able to stop some of them. I'm not the greatest, and that's probably where I lack the most is my breakaways. But I will tell you, it's... It... It... It's worth a try to just stay, stand up, and don't um, use any buttons to drop down. Or, of course, like a pad stack. Don't use that, please, no. Okay, for this tip, I'm going to say, always make sure you're confident in yourself. Make sure you know that you're going to make the next save if you do let in a goal. Of course, don't be, like, hard on yourself. And, of course, I understand, you know, there's going to be goals that are your fault. And you just got to own up to it, say it's your fault, and you'll say you just got to make the next save. So, because if if you get frustrated, you're going to not play up to your best abilities. And you can't be just going out here saying, oh, sorry guys, I, I played a bad game. And I, and I get it, you are going to have bad games. But then, like, of course, if you have a bad game, you want to make sure, hey, Next game, I'm going to up it, figure out what you did wrong, and go into the next game more confident and make sure to think that you will make the save. And if it goes in, then just stop the next puck. 
I like how I, f as I finish that tip, um, I do let in a very trash goal, that was my bad on that one, um, but, yeah, that those happen, and it rolls right into my next tip, watch for the heat seeker shots at the point, alright, when players cut in, maybe off the rush, it's, it, it has a possibility that if they cut with heat seeker, and they, like, cut through, past the blue line in, and, like, just take a heat seeker shot, you have to be ready for it, feet set, and because, and if, especially if they're cutting across, because you got to make sure you're in position, heat seeker is insane, especially from the point, um, off the rush, you know, from the point off the rush, it's super good, it's, it really stinks, and of course, as I said, that shot, really, I probably shouldn't have let it in, but yeah, most of the time, just look for one player's cutting across the middle, watch your short side, and, uh, of course, I would, st instead of moving with the player when they're cutting across the middle, stay set in, because they're most likely going to go short side, so you want to stay set and more cheating short side than far side, and, of course, that, ha the of course, if you do get sniped on it, it is partially your fault for letting in a short side snipe, of course, also near the post, it, just watch your short side, alright, that's what this tip is, is watch your short side, because you should not be getting sniped on your short side. I would say my next tip here is just make sure to watch for players with one T, and also just look for one-timers in general. These one-timers, of course, especially with one T on, they're insanely quick off the stick, and then off the stick, they're very fast and accurate, so you have to watch out for those players. It is tough, and I will give, and I, I'm, I feel bad because goalies are getting left out to dry because of players with one T. It's so tough to move because your guy gets such an early animation. You don't have enough time to move, so you just have to try your hardest to notice that the player is there. But of course, you can't just cheat towards them because, like, then if a player is smart enough to notice that, they'll just snipe you, alright? You gotta make sure you're able to, like, react quick enough to be able to get to the guy with one T or just a straight one-timer. And, of course, like I said, I will tell you, uh, like, what to do to get across for one-timers a little better. Alright, so this tip I learned from... Uh, between the pipes, I learned a lot of these tips from between the pipes, but this one was one of the best tips that I learned, was to always put your guy at the back of the crease, and the reason this is for is because if you leave your guy back of the crease, and of course his butt, his butt and the back of him is up against the post, this is, allows you to n not have to look at your guy the whole time. And of course, that's another tip right there, is never to really look at your guy. Make sure you're always watching the play rather than your actual player. And the reason this is, is because if you lose sight of the puck, you're not going to really... You're, you're It's going to be worse than looking at your goalie knowing that you're in a good position. Of course, like we said, if you're just a little bit out of position but your feet are set, you'll still be fine. You just got to be confident that your angles are on correctly. And of course, this is... the. Uh, I mean, if, if you have to look at your goalie a little bit, it makes sense, all right? But make sure at all, a lot of the time you're just keeping your eyes on the play. So, the, and of course, the keeping your back up against the post, that makes sense, because if you're coming into the zone, or if the other team's coming into the zone, it it allows you not to look at your player, and you're able to kind of get that muscle memory down to how, how much time you have to push up on the right stick to be able to get to the edge of the crease, all right, and it, of course, it does take a little muscle memory to remember, hey, my guy's in the back of the crease, gotta push him out, until he's good, of course, make sure you do it before they get into the zone, so maybe, like, as they cross the red line, is the, one of the best times to then get ready, um, to, so you don't get sniped, of course, 
So those are two tips that I learned from the between the pipes. So shout out to them. So this next tip is just basically when to use your butterfly and here's a few times to use your butterfly, okay? When a player is very in close to you, you probably want to use it like super in close, okay? Because it allows you to kind of be a little more control controlled and also most likely a player's not going to have enough time to raise the puck when in close and of course if they have close quarters which that ability if you're a goalie I feel bad that ability is terrible to play against it's if they're not going to have a lot of time to raise the puck and it's basically going to allow you to um move a little more um controlled and you're just able to uh, allow yourself to follow the puck better when a player is very in close if you dropped a butterfly another time is off of a rebound um make sure like if if a rebounded off your pad make sure to drop the butterfly and get it as quick as you can make a big push to get to the other um get to wherever the rebound went um i guess Another time would be around the posts. So when, if a player tries to do the backhand wrap, of course, this this sucks when a player tries to do a backhand wrap on you because it it, it, very, it goes in a lot. Um, make sure to butterfly on your posts, and this is just so it's better for to get down low and you don't get five hold on a backhand wrap. And, of course, if you are a little late, I mean, that stinks. And, uh, of course, a- any time a player's behind the net, it's there's a good chance you probably want to stay in your butterfly. Uh, point shots as well, as I just noticed right there. Point shots, you can probably also drop butterfly. Um, especially with a player in front. If they if their shot comes off and it hits you and then there's a player in front, you can probably stay in your butterfly. And, uh, so yeah. It's very nice time to use the the butterfly movements, and of course, there's one more time, but I'm gonna put it in with a different tip. Okay, so you'll see that at the end. Now, this is a very tough thing to do, and I even would say I struggle with it. Is being consistent. Um, I would say this one's very tough. That to be consistent, um, it's really a a tip up to you. It, it could be a way that you you come in and warm up every day playing goalie it could be a, a way you do a uh, it, it, it could be a way you th- see the plays it, it you want to make sure that of course everybody's gonna have bad days and that's what you got to know is that you're not the only one that's not consistent but I would say well, it's really tough to be cons- a consistent goalie and I think just over time you will become a more consistent goalie the more you play but it, it's also up to ways you practice the way you got to make sure you think of the plays the same instead of you know switching up your game if if one game it's working all right just cuz it doesn't work one game doesn't mean you have to switch up your play style because then you might be less consistent and it's just up to how you play to be the most consistent goalie you can be all right so this tip is Another one I kind of learned from Between the Pipes. So if you are getting screened in front by a player, um, make sure that you get as close as you can to the player that is screening because then if they get a tip off, they have less time to... Uh, it has less time to move because you're closer to where the tip is happening. Of course, you don't want to be like full out of your crease like it's the 1940s, but... I'm just saying, if you, if you notice that there's a guy screening you, maybe get as close as you can to him without being out of position, and then from there, you're able to um, let those deflections, they're a lot easier to have um, like hit off of you. And of course, Tip Jar is also a good ability to help with that. And I would say, another thing is um, that... Just make sure to, if a player is in front and it does get tipped, um, make sure, like, if 
you're most likely, if your guy does end up, like, covering it, but a lot of the time, since your guy is going to be delayed reacting to it because it's a deflection, it's going to most likely drop off your pad, so maybe butterfly then to drop on the puck. It just makes sense to do it then, so good time to drop butterfly there as well. All right, so this tip is how to kind of use the flying poke check and, like, what when to use it and, like, how to disguise it like you're not going to flying poke. So, a good flying poke is good to throw in sometimes. Of course, if a player notices it, it's easy to go around a flying poke check. But one thing I would say is make sure that when if it's a breakaway, if there are players behind him, okay, very close behind him, he's going to most likely try to get speed on him, and he's going to try to go straight line, all right? And I would say your best bet is if a player is close behind, do the flying poke check on that breakaway because I'm telling you, not only do you, does it look cool because you take out like five people in the process with how many people are behind them, but it's tough for them to make the move because if they make a move around you, it's most likely there's a chance because they're going to have to slow down there's a chance that they're going to have to get they're going to get poke checked so it's very good to use when there when there's a big pile coming in on a breakaway so good time to use it then on a um i guess when it's a penalty shot make sure the player is maybe coming in with speed it looks like they're going to shoot it or just throw it make it look like they're caught off guard because sometimes and it makes them frustrated too it, it, players don't like when they get flying poked another thing is make sure to throw in f fake flying pokes okay so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna like act like you're coming out of your crease and then you're gonna move back into your crease before they can they're able to shoot it and the reason this is is because it can t sometimes make them panic and like go do something like go away from where they think that flying poke is going to be and it's it can be kind of easy to read from there now of course if you do miss it it's it does kind of stink because it's like you just used a fake flying poke and they didn't get met, they didn't get screwed up by it and it just looks like a bad play um but the way to kind of flying poke too is it, make sure like you have a lot of speed going into it so like push up in your crease just a little bit and it allows you to get that that forward leverage that you need to flying poke check all right so my next and this is my second to last tip here is use reaction time drills all right find an app maybe that helps with reaction time and just keep working with your reaction time until you feel like you you have a, it's a good react, you can react good, and it just allows you to be able to be, um, more ready for these, uh, more ready for, um, one-timers, and just, it allows you to, because you remember, you're reacting to the play, you can anticipate, but you don't want to, you don't want to move early, alright, so, you can anticipate it, though. Of course, it's you gotta be ready for a uh, ready for any kind of thing that could happen. So you have to make sure that your reaction time is good. So using reaction drills is solid. All right, and my final tip is how to get across for a cross crease. All right, of course, like I said, reaction time is good, but of course. There's a few ways to get across without you having to use the right stick. To be honest, you don't even need to do anything other than stay in your stand-up. It is very easy to use as long as... If you can react quickly, you're able to just stay up. And if anything, use the speed burst if you need it. If you don't know how to use the speed burst, if you hold down on L3... Um, so, like, hold down on your left stick, it will give you a speed boost. And that's a very good thing to have, is having that speed boost. Another thing is, is moving across, and then start moving across in your stand-up, and then go down into butterfly, alright? 
that is a very, very good one that I like to use because it allows you to get across and your your guy isn't in a, in an animation using the right stick where your guy will slide left or right, all right? Where your your glove side is out. Like, so if you slide left, your glove is kind of pushing out. Your glo- it, you're holding your glove out, okay, is exactly what I'm trying to say. If you go right side... It's most likely going to go off your, your blocker is going to kind of be reaching out. With a butterfly movement, you're kind of just in the middle somewhere. You're not in an exact place to, like, th- there's no specific animation. You're just kind of moving across, and you're able to allow your own guy to kind of decide whether it's going blocker or glove side, because if a player goes, as you're moving right, shoots left, your guy is still has the chance of getting it, because he can reach across with that glove, and it's, it, he still has the chance of getting it, so, I use that a lot, of course, the right stick, like I said, is kind of just a desperation save if you need it, so that's how I stop a cross crease, good reaction times, butterfly, and use your stand-up speed burst, that's how I use it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this was, a. Uh, uh, this was long awaited. I had said it in my b- previous builds video. If you want to check out my goalie builds, go and check them out at um, at the video that I made. So that was, but that's about it for this video. Um, as you can see here, we end up losing that game to a very fluky play. Hit off my helmet. My guy should have caught it with his glove. But yeah, uh, of course, I'm trying to make it into the esports scene. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and. Uh, See you guys on the next one.